All right, this is a homework help video for Lesson 4-4. And uh, I've just chosen a few of your homework problems to maybe help you out a little bit. And uh, this is number two, and we're supposed to prove that these two triangles are congruent using angle side angle. All right, so let's go ahead and establish the given statements that we are told. So we're told that side ST is parallel to UV. So I can go ahead and make our arrow markings. We're also told that those two sides are congruent. And we have to establish uh, angle side angle. So we've got the side and we need uh, two angles uh, on either side. To establish angle side angle it has to be two angles and the included side. So basically we have to establish that these two angles are congruent and as well as these in order to stay with side angle side. Well fortunately because these two lines are parallel we have these two transversals and so we can say for example that angle S is congruent to angle V and because they are alternate interior angles and we could say the same thing for angle T being congruent to angle U same reason and now that we've established those two were congruent and the included side was told that it was congruent. Now we can say that the two triangles are congruent to each other. So triangle STW congruent to triangle v, VUW and uh, we have done that, proven that with angle side angle. Alright, I'm going to jump ahead to number four and this one we have to use angle angle side. Alright, so we're told that FH bisects angle EHG. Alright, let's just go ahead and mark that. Um, FH bisects EF or EHG. All right, so we'll go back and establish that those are going to be congruent by definition of angle bisector. And we're also told that FEH, angle FEH, is congruent to angle FGH, FEH and FGH are congruent. All right, so now let's go ahead and establish that angle FHE is congruent to angle FHG. That's the definition of angle bisector. And again, we're supposed to do this with angle angle side, so that would be two corresponding angles being congruent and a non-included side which would be like that side and so we could say that FH is congruent to itself by the reflexive property and so now we've proven that these two triangles are congruent Triangle FEH is congruent to triangle FGH using angle angle side. All right, I'll go ahead and do number five. Um, same process. We're going to prove that these two triangles are congruent using angle angle side. All right, so angle RPQ is congruent to angle RTS All right. R is the midpoint 
for QS. So that tells me that QR and SR are congruent. And again, we're supposed to use uh, angle, angle, side. And so we have the the one pair of corresponding angles, and now we need another pair that's not including, it wouldn't be this side to be angle, angle, side. So we could use uh, these, this pair of angles, and we could call that uh, angle PRQ is congruent to SRT because they are vertical angles. And now we have proven that these two triangles are congruent to each other. PQR, TSR by angle, angle, side. All right, and then um, I thought I would go ahead and do a few of these. Uh, I won't do them all, but uh, just pick out a few. Uh, to go over with you just so you can kind of see how you're doing. Uh, number one, for example, uh, we're told that these two angles are congruent, corresponding angles between these two triangles. And since they share a side, that means that this shared side would also be congruent by the reflexive property. So this angle side angle. All right, angle, side, angle. All right, um, I'll just jump around a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at number four. Um, we have these two right triangles, um, and they share this side, which just happens to be the hypotenuse, so that would have to be congruent. They also uh, have a congruent pair of corresponding legs, so this would be an example of hypotenuse leg. All right, number five, we notice a couple of pairs of corresponding congruent sides, um, but we're not told anything about these angles being congruent, so we can't do side angle side. We're not given any indication that those are congruent. Um, we know that these angles are, but uh, that would not be side angle side either. So uh, the bottom line here is that there is no congruency that can be established just from what we're given. So uh, we're just going to say not congruent, at least with what we're told. All right, uh, let's take a look at number six. Um, we're given, okay, these corresponding angles are congruent, uh, sides are congruent. Now it's important to notice that these two um, sides are parallel, and uh, we have this transversal that cuts right through. So that means that uh, these angles here would be congruent. All right, and if that's so, then we have angle, side, angle that's established. These would be considered corresponding. So for number six, we could say uh, angle, side, angle. All right, uh, let's jump down to number 10. Uh, for number 10, uh, we're told uh, here's these this pair of congruent angles, a uh, pair of congruent sides that match. Uh, these angles here, this pair would also be congruent. So this is what angle, angle, side looks like. Um, two pairs of congruent angles and a non-included side that is also marked as being congruent. And so number 10 would be angle, angle, side. 
All right. Number uh, 11, uh, we're told about a pair of congruent angles between these two triangles. We know that they have a congruent side, but that's really all we know. So with that limited information, we would have to say that these are not congruent. And then for number 12, uh, to finish off this page, um, we know that um, these sides are parallel. All right. So that means that um, since this is a transversal, these angles would be congruent. All right. And these angles here would also be congruent. And we have another pair of congruent angles. Uh, right here. So we, we actually have two choices here. Um, you could do side angle side. Definitely you could do that. Or you could do angle side angle as well. Um, angle side angle in either case. So it works either way for this. All right, and then um, I'm going to do uh, the two book problems that were assigned. You had to do uh, numbers 14 and 15 on page uh, 316 in your textbook as part of this assignment. So uh, let's just take a look at how these would work. We're told that uh, triangle BCD is congruent. So according to this congruency statement, uh, we can match up angle B and angle W. They they have to be congruent, which makes this really pretty easy. Um, you got several different ways you can go about this. Um, for example, um, XW has to also be congruent to CB, so you could have set those two equal to each other. Um, any way you want to go about it, I'll just go ahead and let angle B be set equal to angle W, and we're just supposed to solve for X. So you get X is 3. You would have, again, you would have gotten that uh, in either. You could have let 2X plus 5 equal 11 and uh, gotten it that way as well. That's your answer for number 14. And then uh, taking a look at number 15, uh, same idea. Um, we're just looking for a pair of uh, corresponding, uh, like, uh, for example, JQ is congruent to JH. You could uh, go about it that way. So you could let JQ, which is 2Y minus 1, equal JH, which is 9. 2y equals 10, y is 5. You could have also said that this is 53 degrees because these are vertical and let all of these add up to 180. Uh, all three of these angles added together equal 180. Solve for y that way. Uh, you would have gotten your answer. But just wanted to go ahead and run through those with you. So hopefully you've already done them and you can just use this video to check. So uh, I hope that's a good uh, representative sample of the problems on your homework enough to help you out. And uh, if you still have questions, uh, let me know. I'll see you next time.